Greetings, Hebron family. It is Friday, September the 4th, 2020. Hey, we are into our first week in September. Uh, as we mentioned in our last week uh, in August, uh, it has been surprisingly peaceful around here. It really has. We know that it's a COVID year. We know that there's a little bit of craziness taking place and people are wearing masks. People are a little bit nervous over stuff, but Remarkably, it's been pretty peaceful right around here at HCA, and we've been super excited about that. If this is your first time jumping in on a Taylor Talk, uh, let me give a couple of things that we try to accomplish here. The first is uh, we always take a look into God's Word and try to glean some truth that is directly applicable for us. And then the second thing that we try to do is talk about one different educational concept uh, or something that we're doing here at HCA that ties directly in to your kids. And so those are the two things we're going to accomplish today. The first thing that I want to do is work through Deuteronomy. And in Deuteronomy, we have this great section of scripture in chapter 6 that really talks about really a philosophy for living. And in Deuteronomy chapter 6, it has this beautiful expression uh, really kind of aimed at parents uh, on how we are meant to develop our kids. And so let me take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 6 and look at some of the lessons that we see. It says this, Now this is the commandment, the statues and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it. That you may, now look at this, I love this idea that here's the commandments, it's not obedience that is a result, okay? That you may fear the Lord, you and your son and your son's son by keeping all the statutes and his commands. So I love this idea, right? We have Moses who has come off the mountain and he's got his tablets. I, I, I can't think of anything other than Charlton Heston. Uh, for those of you guys who are watching this who are too young, you're gonna have to Google that. But for those of you who are older, you know exactly what I'm talking about in the movie, 10 Commandments. Charlton Heston coming off the mountain with his big booming voice, carrying the 10 Commandments. And, and here the 10 Commandments have just preceded this. And now Moses giving this direction, he's saying, is, is he saying, hey, listen, there's a blessing, a generational blessing for you, for your sons, for your son's sons, a generational blessing that comes from obedience, but also results in fear of the Lord. So I love that section, which I command you all the days of your life and that your days may be long. There's another blessing that comes. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them that it may go well with you and that you may multiply greatly in the Lord. As the Lord, the God of your fathers has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey. Now look at this next section, it's beautiful. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. Now, now think about all of the examples here, whether you're awake or you're asleep, whether you're walking, whether you're active, whether you're not active. So he, here what the direction is, is at all times, this is meant to be the center of who we are. This is meant to be at the center of what we're trying to accomplish. It says, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be uh, front, uh, uh, frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so I love in, in this section of scripture, it talks so clearly about this idea that, hey, loving God with everything in us is a philosophy of the way that we're going to live. It's a philosophy of living. And in here, notice there that it talks about a, a result being a fear for God. Now, this isn't fear of being afraid. This is fear of being reverent, right? And so, so here he's challenging us that we're going to be that example. This is a great challenge for all of our moms and dads. Listen, our students, our kids are watching us. Still the very best example, the, the very best source of direction in a student's life is still the parent's. A lot of times media tries to steer us astray and thinking it's something else. And may I just say, it's still you, moms and dads. That's still, you are still the most important thing. And here Moses talks about this idea of a generational blessing. 
And then he also talks about some advantages, that things will go well with you, that you'll multiply, that you'll have a blessing on your life. And I, I love that idea. But then he hits it home with this idea, love the Lord your God with everything in you. And, and if I can just encourage you, hey, as we're looking at this idea of a Christian worldview, as we're looking at this idea of having a worldview that is intricately tied to how we relate to Christ, uh, recognize how countercultural that truly is. And frankly, how increasingly countercultural that is. That with each and every year that goes by, hey, listen, we our, our choice of placing Christ first is becoming more and more and more rare. Which means that, hey, the light that shines in us is that light that is necessary for the world. And, and I love how Moses points this out, that it happens with the family first. So such a great example here uh, of, of recognizing that God's meant to be there. Uh, moms and dads, I know that that places a huge, a, a huge responsibility on your shoulders. I know as a dad myself, boy, I, I felt that responsibility. But may I also say it's also the greatest blessing that we have. We are so pleased at HCA to be able to reinforce what you're doing. We often say that we are meant to be an extension of your home. And that's really what we strive to do. We strive to be an extension of your home, trying to reinforce the things that you're trying to do in your, in your own home. So we, here we talk about a philosophy for living. Hey, in just a minute, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna introduce you to one of our students, Jared. Uh, and we're also gonna talk about a philosophy of education. All right, so hey, we've been talking about the idea of the philosophy for living, the way that we're meant to live with Christ at the center. So now it's my privilege to introduce you to Jared. And Jared is a senior here at HCA, a uh, super smart kid doing some amazing things for God here at the school. And, uh, and also the reason I think this is so important is because Jared is a part of the, the, the class that is filming all of these Taylor Talks. You've been seeing some B-roll uh, with pictures of our students working hard. Talk about a very specific way to teach specific ideas that are educational in nature, but now to apply them to the real world. Well, that in an essence is uh, the nature of STEM education because STEM is gonna take concepts like refraction and light, light structure, uh, sound density, all of those types of pieces that we can understand in a textbook, but now have the kids understand that in the real world, it becomes a STEM education. And so this class is a beautiful example of the philosophy of education that is STEM education. And we're glad to be a part of that here at HCA. Jared is in this class and uh, man, we're excited about what God's doing in, in your world. Uh, tell us a little bit about what your leadership looks like here at HCA. Um, well, I am the student body vice president and director of outreach and I'm an officer in a couple of different clubs. I like to just get out there and try some new things and see what happens. Yeah. Love that. So, so Jared's really, he's really kind of setting the pace on what leadership should look like here at HCA. Uh, so your, your goal is to be at, at UGA uh, and you want to go into chemistry. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of the educational things that make you tick. Some of the things that really excite you educationally. Well, um, I took chemistry my sophomore year and I just really enjoyed it. And so I took it again my junior year. And I just really, really enjoy that class. It just makes sense. Cool. Now, so do you want to take that into lab science? Like what's your end result with that? What do you want to do, kind of your end goal with, with that degree? Well, I haven't figured it out completely yet. Well, and you're allowed to not figure it out. That's good. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking chemical engineering. Awesome because that just seems like a really interesting field to me. Cool, so, so what we try to do here, right, is we really try to take the kids to be able to find where their interests are and where their skill set is. At that intersection is not one job, it's really several jobs, but really taking the philosophy of saying, we're gonna use that career and use that for God's glory. So our goal and my prayer for Jared is that he's gonna go and be a chemical engineer, he's gonna be a chemist, he's gonna be a lab scientist, he's gonna be doing something like that, but he's really gonna be a minister of the gospel who happens to be a chemical scientist, or happens to be a chemist, or happens to be a, a, a lab scientist, where he's gonna be taking his faith and applying that in the real world. That's really the beauty of what we get to do here at HCA. So Jared, last question. Uh, tell me about how you've been bold here at HCA. Well, the great thing about HCA is it's a small school, so there's tons of opportunities to go out there and apply yourself and become a leader. And so how I find being bold is to go out there and make the tough decisions even when you don't necessarily know the answers. Love it. Because um, people look up to you. 
Awesome. And they want to see that you can actually lead. And, and that's where we trust in the Lord, where we're trusting Absolutely. in his path. You know, mm-hmm. awesome. Hey, I'm going to ask you to be bold here for a minute. Will you close this out in a word of prayer? Absolutely. Dear God, thank you so much for letting us be here today. And thank you for letting Dr. Taylor come and talk to us. And please help everybody who listens to this video to be able to take something away from it. And thank you just so much for this class, where they get to teach us these skills. And thank you for our families trusting us enough to send us to school. And please, God, keep us all safe during this time. And we'd love to keep coming here and learning and doing this, all this to glorify you. Christ name we pray. Amen. Hey, all of us here at HCA, man, we, we just, we love serving your families in this capacity. Really, a young man like Jared is the exact reason why we choose to serve in this way. And this really kind of embodies what our calling truly is. HCA, have a great week.